Hi everyone, I'm Mark Miklich, Technical Product Manager for Small Character Technologies here at Squid Inc. Uh, today we're going to uh, do a, a bit of a troubleshooting video. Um, so we're going to discuss uh, potential issues with getting ink or makeup into the mix tank of your Jetstream CIJ printer. Um, so if we're having any issues filling the mix tank up with ink or uh, getting makeup into the tank for uh, viscosity management purposes. So uh, we're going to start out on the ink side. Um, so we're going to discuss uh, all the different components involved with getting ink from the cartridge to the mix tank. Um, so we actually have a scenario here uh, that uh, would be fairly uncommon, but I guess it could happen. Um, you'll see we have a warning on our display that says uh, mixing tank filling has failed. Uh, so this means we have not been able to get ink out of the ink cartridge and into the mix tank. Um, there are two scenarios in which you could see this warning. One is if you are commissioning a printer or starting a system up, when it's initially trying to fill the mix tank, it's having a problem, uh, you'll have this alarm. The other scenario is just during normal operation, the printer's running, uh, every once in a while, if the fluid level in the mix tank gets too low, it will automatically call for more ink. Uh, if it cannot fill during that time, you'll see the exact same thing on your display. Okay? Uh, if we don't address this problem and we can't get the, the mixing tank full of fluid, it will not run. Um, so it either won't start up in a commissioning scenario, or if we're running and jetting, it will uh, eventually shut down to protect itself from completely running out of fluid in the mix tank. Okay, before we really get into the, uh, the hardware or physical components of this, um, you might be curious uh, as to how the system can tell whether or not uh, the cartridge actually has fluid in it first. Um, so what we're gonna do is open up the front of the machine and I'm just gonna pull the ink cartridge out since we are starting on the ink side. And underneath each cartridge, you're gonna notice this uh, black rectangle. Um, this is a capacitive sensor uh, that is uh, helping to detect whether or not that cartridge is, has fluid in it or whether or not it's empty. Um, there is also a visual reference on our display. Right now you'll see it's showing no fluid. What should happen if we put a full cartridge in? That will show as fluid present. Uh, if by chance we have a full cartridge of ink in the system, if it's showing on the display still that it's empty, again, if we have a full cartridge inserted, uh, we might need to take a look at the, the sensor first, the cartridge sensor. So we're gonna spin the machine around and take a look in the back uh, so we can see where the sensor is located, uh, how to do some brief troubleshooting, and also look at some visual cues uh, that'll help you out during this process. So uh, in the back of the system, we can actually uh, see are two cartridge sensors underneath this assembly here. Um, now, we do have a buffer or a dampener that's kind of in the way if we really need to get at these sensors. Um, so what we can do is uh, take these screws out from the buffer tray and we can just get this out of the way. Okay, so again, we're getting the, the buffer or the dampener out of the way here. Um, so there's just two screws that hold this in place. And I'm only going to remove, completely remove the screw on the left. And then we can just loosen the other screw on the right here. And this entire tray will just kind of slide out. And we may need to move our, our vapor tube too here. But simple as that. So really easy to get that out of the way. And now we can kind of see the underside or the back of these sensors. Now one thing you're going to notice right away is we've got a red LED on on the makeup side. So we do have a makeup cartridge inserted. The red light indicates that it is detecting fluid. The ink cartridge sensor functions the same way. So if we do have a full cartridge inserted or a cartridge with fluid inserted, we should have a red light here. So I'm gonna put in a cartridge really quick just so you can see that light turn on. Okay, so our red light has turned on. This is normally what we would expect to see if the cartridge has fluid in it. If the light does not come on when we insert a cartridge that does have fluid, there is a potentiometer that we can adjust to increase 
uh, or potentially decrease the sensitivity of the cartridge sensor. Okay, so uh, right to the left of our LED, there is a potentiometer. Uh, you'll notice I have a fairly long screwdriver here to access that. It is just a small uh, flathead uh, that would be required to adjust this potentiometer. And all we really need to do, if by chance we have a cartridge with fluid installed and the light is not on, if you rotate that potentiometer clockwise, that will increase the sensitivity. And all we need to do is rotate that until the light turns on. Um, if by chance this light is always on, even if we have an empty cartridge, you can rotate the potentiometer counterclockwise to decrease the sensitivity. Uh, so fairly straightforward uh, how to adjust this. It should come perfectly calibrated from the factory, but just in case uh, it's not picking up a cartridge, again, we can adjust that sensitivity. All right, if we want to make sure uh, we're actually getting the proper signal uh, from the cartridge sensor, um, we can use a digital multimeter here um, to quickly troubleshoot that. Uh, so we're just going to flip this to DC voltage and we're going, going to go back into the back of our cabinet here and we're just going to trace this wire coming off our ink sensor to where it plugs in. And we've just got three wires here. Okay, so the far right is common and the wire on the left is power to the sensor. We should have five volts DC. So if we look at the, the meter right now, we should be reading five volts, okay? The middle wire is our actual uh, signal. Uh, if we have no cartridge present or we have an empty cartridge, we should be seeing uh, about five volts DC uh, for a signal as well. If we install a cartridge that does have fluid, that signal should drop down uh, to about two volts or a little bit lower. That's the signal the system is looking for to determine whether or not fluid is present. So right now we do not have a cartridge installed or we have an empty cartridge. We're seeing five volts for our signal. Okay, I'm still uh, looking at the signal here. Uh, we did just slide in a cartridge that does have fluid in it and now we've dropped down to uh, about 1.1 volts DC. So drop that signal down quite a bit. So the printer now recognize that as will recognize that as fluid present and uh, we should also see that red LED come on uh, on the back side of the sensor. So we know that we're getting the proper signals to the machine now. All right, once we verified that the cartridge sensor is uh, working properly or calibrated properly, um, we're gonna move on to some of the easy stuff first. So um, don't overlook really basic things with fluid delivery. Um, so again, we're talking about getting uh, ink from the cartridge to the mix tank. Um, check the, the really simple things first. So we're gonna take a look at the cartridge. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the cartridge first and just make sure everything's okay there. So I'm gonna slide the cartridge out, the ink cartridge, and we're gonna look at a couple of visual indicators here really quick. Um, one is we're gonna make sure that the cap is on correctly. We're gonna make sure someone didn't try to take this off or put it on backwards, whatever it might be. Um, if that were to happen, if the cap were on backwards, the draw tube would be on the wrong side. And instead of pulling ink out, we'd actually be blowing air into the cartridge. Um, so if we look at the cartridge, if you have it facing you, you'll see there's a, a small indentation here on the uh, bottom side of the cap. Uh, this is actually from the injection molding process of the cap. Um, and what it tells us is that this has been installed correctly. So it's been rotated on correctly and the draw tube is on the correct side. If this indentation was on the top of the cap, that would tell us the draw tube is now on the wrong side and we're not gonna be able to pull any fluid out. Another good uh, visual indicator for the cartridge uh, as to whether or not things are okay here is you'll see we have two membranes that get punctured when we slide the cartridge in. One is for fluid out, one is for air displacement. Um, you should uh, fairly clearly be able to see that these are punctured to allow both fluid and air to flow. 
If they're not punctured, first thing to do is just make sure you're sliding the cartridge in all the way. Um, if you do that and you're still noticing one of these not getting punctured, we would then start taking a look at our uh, pin socket assembly that the cartridge slides into. Okay, so if we've, we're noticing that uh, you know at least one of the membranes on our cartridge is not being punctured after we've slid the cartridge all the way in, we're going to take a look at the again the pin socket assembly that the cartridge slides into. Um, so when I'm talking about the pin socket assembly, we're talking about this right here. Okay, so in the pin socket assembly, there's a, a literally a pin on each side that's puncturing our cartridge uh, and what we're checking uh, or what we're looking for now is uh, for one whether or not those pins are somehow bent or damaged and if that's not the case we're going to check and see whether or not they're potentially plugged. Okay uh, to access uh, the pin socket assembly or if we want to just completely take it out of the machine to look at it um, we're going to go to the back of the printer. I've got the printer turned off at this time we don't need power to the system to, to troubleshoot this so Again, we're going to go to the back of the printer, pull out a pin socket assembly and take a peek. Okay, so if we want to completely remove our pin socket assembly, we're going to work on the ink side here. Um, you'll see this white block right here. This is the back of that cartridge insert or that pin socket assembly. There's only four screws that are holding this in place. So you'll see four Phillips screws here. Okay, two on each side. I'm just going to take those out and then this entire assembly can actually be pushed out the front of the cartridge assembly. So we would do this with the, the ink cartridge out so we can move this or push it out when we're done taking the screws out. Um, the only other thing we could also do is disconnect both of the hydraulic lines. Um, these will pop off fairly easily, especially if you have uh, something like a side cutter where you can just kind of slide these off of the pins. If you do take the tubes off, make sure you mark one of the sides so you know how they go back on. One is for ink, one is for air. It's very important that these go back on on the same sides. Okay, so when those four screws are out, again, this entire pin socket assembly will come out the front of the machine. Um, I disconnected the ink line. I left the air displacement tube on for this, but um, you know, these come out really easy, and now we're gonna check a couple things. One is uh, we're going to look and make sure that the pins aren't somehow bent or damaged. Um, this one actually, uh, just for example, we do have a damaged pin and you can kind of compare between the two. So you'll see we have a nice uh, pointy pin on the right hand side here and on the left we have one that's bent or looks like it's been pinched off. In this scenario, uh, it would be best just to replace this assembly. Um, they're very inexpensive, easy to swap out. That would take care of our problem. Um, if the pin was not damaged, we can actually take this apart and clean it out, make sure there are no obstructions inside the pins. Okay, so we're looking again at our pin socket assembly um, and how we can take this apart. So from the back, we've got these four hex screws. These are two and a half millimeter. Um, if we loosen these up, I've already got them started, uh, but if you back these out we can take this assembly apart and what you're going to see is really just the continuation of those two pins, so for fluid and air displacement. Um, so what we can do with this is one, be careful, there are uh, a couple of small O-rings here. This side actually remained in the other part of the assembly. So make sure you keep track of these O-rings. Okay, so we'll kind of set these aside for now. And what we're gonna do is just kind of back flush this in case we, thought there, we think there is an obstruction in the pin. Um, we can put a, a squeeze bottle of solvent up to this side and just kind of work some fluid through it. Okay. 
Okay, so we can see that that's clear now. And so if there uh, were any debris in there, we should have pushed it out. Now we should have a free flow through this part of the assembly. And again, we can do that to this side as well. Same thing. And we can also check the other side of this assembly. So this is kind of the output side, if you will. So we're gonna force fluid backwards. So if there's an obstruction in here, we're gonna to try to work it out. Okay, and again, we can do that to both sides. We can pull this tube off if we need to, just to make sure that nothing's stuck in here. Okay, before you put this back together, again, make sure you've got the O-rings back in place. Okay, and just make sure that this cap goes back on the same way it came off. We're gonna put the screws back in and we're done cleaning out the pin socket assembly. Okay, once we verified that everything's okay with uh, cartridge detection, with the cartridge itself, and with that pin socket assembly that it plugs into, um, there's not a whole lot of hardware left in between the cartridge and the mix tank. Um, we've got some hydraulic tubing, uh, which is probably the least likely candidate to be an issue. Um, we have a diaphragm pump and we have a solenoid valve. That's it. So when we add ink to the mix tank, what normally happens is uh, the ink transfer pump turns on and at the same time a solenoid valve, in this scenario valve 6, opens and allows us to take fluid from the cartridge, put it into the mix tank. Um, so I'm going to show you where the pump and valve are located and uh, then I'm going to show you a, a handy diagnostic tool built into the system that we can use to uh, activate or deactivate those pieces of hardware, see if they're functioning. Uh, and after that, we'll actually take them apart and I'll show you how to clean them out. All right, so we're in the back of the machine again, and I'm gonna point out the diaphragm pump that we use for ink delivery and the valve that we use. Um, so we've got two diaphragm pumps in the back of the machine, really easy to access when you open the back door. And it's pretty easy to identify most of the time what the ink pump is. Um, it's always the pump on the left and you'll see where there's a little bit of ink in these lines here. Um, the makeup pump is on the right, that should always be perfectly clear, okay? Um, so, ink pump could be a reason why we're not getting ink into the mix tank, or valve six. So valve six is what we open to allow fluid to th uh, flow from the pump into the mix tank. So valve six is right here. All of the valves and pumps are labeled in our production units as well. So the machines that you have uh, out in the field will have these labels. So really easy to identify what's what in the back of your printer. Okay, uh, so again, we're gonna look at the, uh, the ink pump and the solenoid valve, valve six. Um, there are some audible cues here to make sure that these are functioning. Um, the solenoid valve, for example, is a fairly loud click when you're opening or closing it and the diaphragm pump is a fairly loud, a loud hum when it's running. Um, so what we can do is use a, a system diagnostic tool that's built into the printer, into the programming, that we can utilize to uh, open or close the valve or run the pump, and at least see if we can hear something happening. Um, if we don't hear a valve clicking or pump running, uh, that'll typically point us in the right direction. Okay. Okay, to access the system diagnostic feature, We'll have our system turned on. We're not jetting, we just have power on to the printer. We're gonna to go to the settings page. We're gonna to go to diagnostic, and then we need to access device diagnostic. When we hit this key, we will be prompted for a passcode, and that passcode is always the current day's date. It's a two-digit day, two-digit month, two-digit year format. So for example, uh, today's date is uh, January 29th, 2021. So the password would be 290121.
Okay, so uh, once that password is entered correctly, you're gonna see the right hand side of your display change here. So now we've got a system diagnostic, device diagnostic page. We can access all of our valves, our pumps, and some other features. For the ink delivery part of the system, again, from ink to, uh, from the cartridge to the mix tank, all we're worried about is valve six and our ink replenishment pump. So uh, all we have to do right now, or what we can do right now, uh, if we wanna uh, just hear if valve six is opening and closing, we can just click this on and we should hear an audible uh, click from the system. And even though it says debugging here, we can toggle this on and off. And hopefully you guys can hear a, a fairly loud click coming from the back of the printer. That's valve six opening and closing. If you did not hear that click, it means uh, that very, very likely the plunger inside that valve is stuck and it's not doing anything and we would need to clean that valve out. Okay, uh, ink replenishment pump, uh, kind of the same deal. We're just uh, looking for some audible uh, cues here. Um, so if I click on, we should hear that pump running. Again, it's fairly loud. We can just cancel out. Now, uh, if you don't hear that noise, um, the pump is likely seized up. So we can discuss how to clean that out. There are scenarios in which you might hear the diaphragm running or the pump running, but the input and output flaps of that pump could be uh, stuck. So um, it's good that we can hear it running. It's still something we might take a look at anyway. Um, but again, don't forget to use system diagnostic and device diagnostic uh, to your advantage. This is a really helpful tool to point you in the right direction as to what piece of hardware we should take a look at. Okay, so if our valve or pump were not functioning, uh, what we're gonna do is turn the system off, go to the back of the printer and clean those components out. It's very unlikely that either of those components are just gonna outright fail. The most likely culprit is they're, they're just stuck. So maybe the printer sat for a really long time or was shut down improperly and there's some dried up ink in there. We just need to clean them out and get them functioning again. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at valve six first. Okay, so um, we're pulling this off in the scenario in which you know we're not hearing the valve click. Uh, it's not opening and closing. We're gonna take this off and clean it out. So first thing we're gonna do is actually just get this sticker out of the way because um, the two screws that bolt this to the manifold are underneath the sticker. Um, we're gonna take these screws out and that will completely unbolt uh, the valve from the manifold. Uh, being that this is an ink valve, there's always a chance that there'll be a little residual fluid in here. Um, so be ready with a, a paper towel or rag to catch that excess fluid. Um, okay, so we've got the valve unbolted from the manifold. You'll see we've got a little resistance here uh, for two reasons. One is we've got a hydraulic line going to the manifold and we've got uh, our power and uh, ground wire going to the valve. Um, so we can disconnect those three items. Um, one thing you'll notice when I, uh, first, when I pulled the valve off the manifold, a pair of O-rings uh, fell out. So there are two O-rings on the valve for the input and output. Um, make sure you keep track of these. Uh, naturally, they will have to go back in when we reinstall the valve. Um, so now what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna disconnect the wires, disconnect the tubes so we can get this valve all the way out. Okay, so uh, we've got the wires off. Um, now we're gonna get the tube off. You'll notice there's a little uh, extra sheath here that slides over where the tube connects to the barb fitting on the top of the valve. So we're gonna slide that up first and out of the way. Now we just need to pop the tube off of the top of the valve. Um, now I've got a fairly sp uh, special set of uh, needle nose here that with different holes in them for different diameters of tubing. If you don't have something like this, which is totally fine, um, again, a, a small set of side cutters, you can actually get down around the base of the tubing and just kind of force it up and off that barb fitting. Okay, so we've got the valve out. Again, this is an ink valve, so it's, you know, you'll notice there's a little bit of ink. It's not too bad. Um, 
So again, just pre be prepared for maybe a little bit of a mess. And then again, we had those two O-rings that came out as soon as I unbolted this from the manifold. Those O-rings uh, go right here. And we'll get this cleaned up a little bit as we uh, progress through this uh, process. Um, but again, once we're all done, just make sure you've got two O-rings. Those are gonna go back in here when we reinstall the valve. Now what we want to do is actually take the uh, solenoid off of the valve so we can access the plunger assembly and make sure that that's not stuck. Um, realistically, that would be the most likely cause if this valve were not working, uh, that plunger being stuck. So with this valve, what we need to do, we've got this little locking clip up top here. So we need to slide this off and that will allow us to slide the plunger assembly out of the solenoid, okay? Uh, it does help to have uh, something like a set of needle nose in this scenario, and we can just kind of pop this clip off. So again, this is our locking clip up here. So when you're sliding this clip off, this is what you should see. And again, when you get it far enough, it should just kind of pop off. Hopefully not fall off like that. So it'll pop off, and then there is a flat washer underneath, so just be mindful of that. And what we can do at this point with the clip off is we can actually slide the plunger housing out of the solenoid, okay? So this is what we want to get at. Um, this is where the moving parts are, and this is what uh, could potentially be seized up. So again, we're going to set the solenoid off to the side. Be aware again of this flat washer. Make sure you don't lose that. Okay, so in order to take this apart to access the plunger, we do have four more uh, screws to deal with. Uh, these are uh, these do require a, a torque driver. Um, this is a T10. So we're going to back these out and this will allow us to pull the cap off and again access that plunger assembly that's inside this shaft here. Okay. So we've got our four screws out, and you'll notice there's a little bit of ink in here. Again, a little bit of a mess, not too bad. But what we're really trying to get at is this plunger right here. You'll see that's spring-loaded. Um, this is what's opening and closing when we uh, energize or de-energize that solenoid. Um, if the valve wasn't functioning, this is typically stuck. And it's usually stuck in like this. So if this is moving freely, that's a, that's a great sign. If it's not, what we need to do is clean this up and you can actually take this plunger out. And again, you'll see there's a little bit of ink inside here, but uh, what we would wanna do in the scenario in which this was stuck or the spring is stuck is we just need to clean all this up. If there's dried up ink, we just need to get that removed, uh, make sure everything's nice and clean. We'll put it back together and we should be good to go. One thing I'll point out too is uh, this plunger housing. Um, there is a large O-ring here. Now it does a pretty good job of staying uh, seated, but make sure that that is there when you're done cleaning up and we put this assembly back together. Okay, so once you've got this cleaned up, again, that spring should be moving freely. That plunger should be moving freely. That's what we wanna see, okay? So now we're gonna reassemble the entire uh, valve or plunger assembly. We'll slide this back into the solenoid and then we will uh, reconnect our hydraulic line and wires and we'll put this back on the manifold.
Okay, so now we're gonna slide the solenoid back onto our valve here. Again, make sure our flat washer is here. Um, we're gonna put the clip back on and then again, be mindful of your O-rings. So we will have to put the two O-rings back here before we bolt this onto the manifold. Um, I personally like to reinstall the, the valve onto the manifold. Uh, then we can connect our hydraulic line and our, our wires here. Okay, clip is on. We've got our two O-rings. And our two screws. Okay, so we've got our O-rings, or we've got our, our uh, assembly clip back together. We've got our O-rings installed and we've got our screws in. So we're ready to mount this to the manifold. This is how it should look. And again, I can't stress enough, be mindful of your O-rings, make sure those don't fall out while we reinstall the valve. When we're reinstalling, if there's a little bit of ink on the manifold, you can go ahead and uh, use a lint-free wipe and some cleaning solvent and just wipe that off. Okay, so the valve is mounted back up to the manifold. We can go ahead and put our sticker back on if we want. And then the last two things we need to do, again, reconnect our wires. Um, nice thing with this is, again, it's just a, a solenoid valve. Um, you don't need to keep track of polarity here as long as you get these two wires back on uh, either side here, you're gonna be okay. Um, then we do need to reconnect the hydraulic line or the tube to the top. Again, it's actually easier to do this stuff after the valve is installed. That way you're not fighting the tubing uh, or the wires when you're trying to bolt this back up to the manifold. Um, you will notice, even though I said it, you don't really need to keep track of polarity of these wires. You'll, um, you'll notice red on all the other valves is on the left. Good visual indicator of how these wires were attached, okay? Um, again, then after that, I'm just gonna put this tube back on and we should be okay. If you're having a, a tough time reaching the tube or getting it back on, just having your hand in here in general, just remember you can slide the hydraulic system out with this printer. So uh, there are just a, a couple screws in the front of the machine that hold this tray in place. And we'll show you where those are located. Okay, so we've got our tube installed. We've got that um, little sleeve slid back over as well. So our, our valve is uh, cleaned out, reinstalled, and everything's connected. All right, if you do wanna slide the uh, hydraulic system out a little bit for easier access, uh, you know, when we're reinstalling that valve, um, there are just gonna be two screws up front here. I've already got mine removed. Uh, they're just Phillips screws, just back them out, and that will allow you to slide this out uh, the back of the machine uh, pretty far. All right, the last component we're gonna look at here is the ink uh, transfer pump or diaphragm pump. Um, again, this could also be a reason why we're not getting uh, fluid from our cartridge to the mix tank. Um, again, you'll notice very easy access to these since they're right in the back of the machine. And all we really wanna do is we're gonna take these caps off, or this cap off uh, the ink transfer pump. That will allow us to access uh, the diaphragm and the input and output flaps. So uh, in case one of those items is stuck, we can clean it up really quick, put it back together, and we should be up and running. Uh, when we take this apart, I do like to have, a, again, a towel or rag handy. There's gonna be uh, some ink coming out of here. Again, this is an ink transfer pump. Um, even if it's seized up, we should have some residual fluid in here. So make sure you're prepared for that. Okay, so we've got our, our four screws loosened up um, so we can start pulling this assembly apart. So you'll see there's this black cap that just kind of goes over the top of everything. We're sliding that out. And now there's two main pieces here. There's two green blocks 
In between these blocks, we have uh, an input and output flap. So those kind of open and close when the, the diaphragm is moving in and out. Um, so we're gonna take this apart and take a look at those and make sure they're not stuck. And again, you see we do have some ink in here. That's totally normal. We're gonna take these two blocks apart and we can access our flaps. Um, so again, a, a bit of ink, but what we're looking for are these two flaps here. And uh, normally these open and close, so I'll pull this one out so you can kind of see how it works. Okay, so I'm gonna wash this up a little bit just so we can get a better idea of what these flaps look like. These do, the flaps do come out, so just be careful when you're cleaning this up. Again, if you have a lint-free towel, you can use that to dry some of this fluid up. Okay, so we can kind of get a better view of one of the flaps here. So normally, these should move freely like this. Um, if these are totally glued down by dried up ink, again, that's usually from some fairly significant neglect. Um, but this would be the reason why we're not getting fluid typically moving through the pump. So we've got two of these. We've got one on this uh, block. There's one on the other. If you're not sure how they line up, you'll see that there are actual grooves in the block. And those will only line up on one side of the flap. So you'll actually see this flap, for example, has those grooves in it. This actually will only match up with this side of the other block, if that makes sense. Um, you'll also see that they're in different orientations, so you can't really mess up which one goes where. Okay, um, so here's the flap from the other side. I did pull it off. Um, so again, these do come out, and I, the reason I took it off is hopefully you can see the grooves, again, on uh, this side of the flap. So that's how you make sure you line it up properly when you reinstall these in the block. So again, we're making sure everything is nice and clean. The flaps are gonna be able to move freely. And we're gonna um, just reinstall this or, or put this part of the, the uh, block back together. You'll also see that you can insert these on this side. That'll kind of help out when we bolt this back up. Um, now that we've got the flaps in this part of the block clean. Another thing we do want to look at is the diaphragm itself. Okay, so we're going to kind of move our towels out of the way just so you can see what's going on here. Um, here's our diaphragm right here. Okay, this should move freely. I don't know if you can see it'll kind of move back and forth a little bit. Um, if this were a problem, this would also be completely glued in place by dried up ink. Um, so I'll just wash this off really quick, but it is moving, um, or it will move, so that's a, a good sign. Uh, another trick you, uh, you can use uh, to your advantage to make sure that the diaphragm is moving, uh, if you uh, Go back in our video to the system diagnostic or that devi device diagnostic page in the system. Um, we could turn the printer on, we could go into the device diagnostic, and we could activate our ink pump right now, and this diaphragm would move around uh, then too. So you can visually verify that this is moving freely. Um, if you do that, make sure you do not start jetting the system or anything like that. We're just turning it on for device diagnostic and for running the ink transfer pump. Okay, so we're gonna bolt everything back up. Again, we're gonna uh, put these two blocks back together. Pretty easy to make sure that those flaps are lined up properly. So we'll put this back together and then uh, we'll be able to match this up to the rest of the pump. Make sure your diaphragm is kind of nice and centered here. It's not pushed off too far to one side.
and we've got our cap. Okay, so we've looked at uh, really all the hardware components that are in line with the uh, adding ink circuit, again, from the cartridge to the mix tank. What we can do now, um, so we've cleaned up our valve, we've cleaned up our pump, um, we've looked at our cartridge, pin socket assembly, all that good stuff. We're gonna go ahead and put the cartridge back in. And again, in this scenario, our, our mix tank is low because we weren't able to add fluid. So um, we have this warning on the display when we turn the system back on. Uh, mixing tank is empty please confirm if adding ink. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna kind of spin around to the back of the machine again, because we'll be able to tell now, uh, visually we'll be able to see if we're getting ink from the cartridge through the pump uh, to the valve and the, the uh, manifold. Um, so I'll spin it around here and then we'll click yes and we should hopefully see fluid flowing through. Okay. So here's where we will be coming out of the ink cartridge, and then we should be able to see it flowing through our ink pump tubes here and out to the manifold. So we'll just keep an eye on that. When we click yes, we should see fluid moving. Okay, so we can see that that line did fill up with ink. So we are moving fluid, which is what we want to see. And I'll also show you another trick. We'll basically use the same visual indicators. Uh, we can do this exact same process with system diagnostic as well. So we could activate our ink replenishment pump. We could open valve six, just using that system diagnostic. We would also achieve the same result of getting fluid from the cartridge to the mix tank. Okay, again, if we also want to make sure that we've uh, fixed everything, we can use system diagnostic again. We'll go into our settings, diagnostic, device diagnostic, and then we're going to type in the password. Again, it's always the current day's date, two-digit day, two-digit month, two-digit year format. Okay, so again, we can also open up valve six. We could turn our ink replenishment pump on. We could look in the back of the machine and see that the flow, the ink is flowing from the cartridge through the pump to the manifold. So we can click valve six on, ink replenishment pump on, and we could also watch that flow. Okay, so again, we can see that we're getting ink from the cartridge. This line is full in and out of our diaphragm pump and out to the manifold. Okay, so again, that system diagnostic, really, really helpful tool. Okay, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned we're looking at both the uh, ink delivery and makeup delivery, uh, and uh, what pieces of hardware to look at, and how to troubleshoot each circuit uh, in regards to getting those fluids from the cartridges to the mix tank. Uh, on the makeup side, the hardware is basically identical. Okay, so same type of cartridge, same pin socket assembly, uh, same type of diaphragm pump, and same valve, okay? So watching the beginning of this video, watching us take apart those components, it's the exact same thing on the makeup side. Um, we'll go over the, the valve number for makeup and where the pump is located, uh, but before we do that, we'll just discuss the scenario in which we would notice that the system is having a tough time getting makeup out of the cartridge. Uh, and that's gonna be related to the viscosity of the fluids in the system. Um, so what will happen is, in this scenario, uh, if we're having trouble managing the viscosity of our fluids, we're not able to get makeup into the tank, um, our viscosity is gonna climb higher and higher. The fluids are gonna get thicker and thicker. So for one, if you're curious what the viscosity should be, we can go into the settings page, and we can go to ink system, or maintenance, just about any of these pages you're gonna see on the uh, top right, we have ink viscosity. Now, the, this printer currently isn't running, 
or jetting, but it will always tell us what the target viscosity is. If we see that number, uh, we'll have a real-time reading here. If we see that number climbing higher and higher, that means the fluids are getting thicker and thicker. Uh, once we reach or surpass 10% above our target, the system is going to give us an alarm saying that there's a viscosity issue or viscosity error. If you would like to see the trend of the viscosity of the fluids, we can go to the maintenance page and we can go to the viscosity record. Okay, so again, our target is 55. This machine is, is pretty healthy. It's staying right around 55. But if we notice this number, the machine is uh, checking every three minutes. So if we notice this number climbing every three minutes above 55, higher and higher, there's a very good chance we're not getting makeup from the cartridge to the mix tank to th out that fluid and drop that number back down. In that scenario, that's when we would start troubleshooting the makeup circuit of the system. Okay, so again, we're looking at the makeup side of the system. Again, cartridge is the same. Uh, pin socket assembly is the same uh, as troubleshooting the ink side. Um, the only difference from there is the pump and the valve. So the makeup pump, again, is on the right-hand side. Fairly obvious because the lines should always be nice and clear. Uh, so again, same process for disassembling this pump, making sure everything's working properly. Okay, and then we have valve two. Okay, so valve two is the valve that opens up when we're adding makeup to the mix tank. Okay, so when the makeup pump is on, we then open valve two in this scenario to get makeup into the tank. Uh, we will go ahead and uh, pull valve two out really quick and just take it apart um, so you guys can, get a, uh, can take a look. Again, very similar to valve six. Um, the plunger is a little bit different, um, again, just to give you guys an idea. Now, normally, this valve only handles makeup, should be perfectly clean. Um, we'll still take it apart just so you get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so when we're troubleshooting valve two, um, or really either of the makeup valves here, uh, testing power is exactly the same as what we did earlier in the video for valve six. And also, removing the valve from the manifold is exactly the same process as valve uh, six. Um, or any of the valves for that matter. So we're gonna go ahead and just disconnect our leads, unbolt this from the manifold, and then we'll show you when we take it apart, um, really the slight difference in the plunger, and that's it. So you just, again, get an idea of uh, how it should look internally and how it should function internally. Okay, so we've got valve two off of the manifold, and really one of the, the main differences you'll see here is the top of the valve. We don't have another uh, hydraulic line coming in like we did with valve six. So. Um, still to get at the plunger and the plunger housing, we just need to get the solenoid off here. So it's actually a bit easier with valve two. We're just gonna loosen this nut on top and we can slide the plunger housing assembly out of the solenoid. So we're just gonna take this off really quick. Um, same exact torque driver that we used for valve six, uh, T10, same size. Again, everything else is identical. So the only difference between this and valve six, again, is um, we don't have an extra direction of flow out the top here. And the plunger subsequently is a little bit different. So we'll open this up, show you how it looks, uh, show, uh, show you how it should operate, and that's about it. So again, we're just uh, gonna take off the plunger housing really quick. One thing you'll see again with these makeup valves is they're perfectly clean. Again, they only ever handle makeup, so there's no mess. Um, really, these, these are not failure points, but it's still good for you guys to see how they work, what they look like on the inside. So again, this is the exact same process as what we did with valve six as far as getting the plunger housing off. Um, just a little bit different internals. You'll see we still have an O-ring right here, and then here's our plunger right in the middle. So you'll see that's spring loaded. Again, only ever sees makeup, so it would be really difficult for this to get stuck, um, you know, like an ink valve could. So we'll slide this out really quick, show you the spring. Spring is a main difference here. We just have a little spring in the top of the plunger assembly here. Valve 6, you saw a much larger spring on the exterior of the plunger. So um, that's it. That's all there is uh, to this assembly. Very easy to disassemble, make sure it's clean and functioning properly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put this back together and put it back on the manifold.
All right, so that sums up our video uh, on troubleshooting uh, any issues with adding ink or makeup to our mix tank. Uh, if you want to view any of our other Jetstream videos or other product videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, and also don't hesitate to go to uh, www.squidink.com uh, to get a bunch of additional information on our products. Thank you.